the American Master Sealer. <clears throat> American Can Sealer Automation Project. First thing, decided to use an aluminum baking tray. It's fairly thick, but it's not thick enough to withstand maybe the torque. So I'm going to supplement the base of this with a piece of plywood. A piece of plywood I'm using is just a standard um, half inch piece of plywood for some stability. I'll cut that to size. I mean, you could, if you wanted to take a jigsaw or palm sander and round the corners off to meet the rounded corner of that, that's entirely up to you. Uh, I'm not going to get that crazy about it as long as it's centered, which it is. And I've got it clamped here just so it doesn't move around when I'm um, drilling the pilot holes. All right. That's the first mistake, right? Um, is they're too long. So I'll just take a Dremel tool and whack those off. All right, so that's it. That should be pretty waterproof. Four corners. So the American can sealer comes on this piece of particle board really only on there for packaging. You see really they only put two mounting screws there um, to hold it in place. Uh, I, I of course used it on this. It's, it's versatile the way it is, but uh, we're going to go ahead and remove it from this. Now the next thing we have to do is figure out where we're going to mount these things based on the pulleys and the, where the motor sits. I have it offset because the motor will sit over here. So we'll, we'll play around with the positioning. All right, this is approximately where it's going to sit. Another reason to use a, um, a DC motor is, is for one, you, it can go forward in reverse, and two, you can you can adjust the, the, the voltage for the speed as well. All right then, it's mounted and it's, um, it's solid. I'm, I'm just moving the whole table there, but that's, you can see, it's pretty solid. It's flush, it sits flush on the bottom because I countersunk the holes. I'll show you. <laughs> You know, countersunk. The heads of the bolts are in there. The like, neoprene washers are holding out nice. They're not squeezing out too much. I mean, I didn't reef down on it super tight, but I got it tight enough. And then I did uh, cross tightening because the washers, I wanted them to squeeze equally. Um, and that's nice and solid. So um, yeah, I'm satisfied with the mounting and I have room to mount the motor, the, mo the DC motor itself. momentary on push button it's all aluminum project box for the switch and the time delay circuit various um, washers area washers fender washers Teflon neoprene washers the bolts wood screws to hold the um, metal panel for the wood etc washers, some star washers, and a SSR, but I'm not sure that I'm going to need it, but I have one. Time delay circuit board. All right, so this is the time delay uh, relay. In other words, you can set the delay of how long this relay stays closed when you hit the momentary on. So 
generates its own five volts and this will engage this relay for a set amount of time. That will then in turn power the solid state relay, which will then in turn power the motor controller. On the control box, I've already mapped out where this, I want this, so I'm just going to have that show through. Go ahead and take that off of the Dremel. All right, the momentary on switch is next. Use the step bit for that. It is now mounted uh, in the proper position. Of course, it's on us. It's slotted. And let's see here if I can show that. It also has the neoprene washers and uh, the area washer. Um, or hopefully some semblance of uh, waterproofing the tray. And then <clears throat> the motor controller I'm using, there are different ones out there, but this one works um, pretty good for this motor size. And um, you can also vary the speed of the motor, which is important in this case. Uh, um, secondary, I'm gonna have it on standoffs, on the box itself. So the electronics don't end up soaking in um, beer, <laughs> would not be good. So the box is going to be standing off the tray, sort of like that. Okay. And then my final box, which is <clears throat> it's going to have the relay in it, is I'm actually going to mount it to the top of this box, maybe offset a little bit. The green button will sit on the top of that, <clears throat> you'll hit that once. <clears throat> The motor will go around a revolution uh, of the canning system, which is multiple revolutions of this of this wheel here, uh, because it's a uh, gear reducted, and um, hopefully I get it to stop uh, properly uh, in, in the same spot every time. If not, I'll have to use some sort of mechanical braking system. That's the goal. We'll play with it, um, but so far this is what I am envisioning as the final product. It's still a fairly small footprint and that's what I was trying to achieve here. All right, so I have it on the standoffs as I mentioned. You had to take the cover off to get to the mounting holes. But it's nice and solid that I can pick the whole thing up. Also, I, I put it on rubber feet just to take any vibrations out of it. Put rubber feet under there as well. Along okay, it's um, getting ready for the wiring portion. Right now I just have it, the wiring I used all the same color wire. It doesn't matter to me. I know where they're going. I will put the drawing up on the screen here afterwards. This um, module here is the time delay module. Of course, you all know that, that would be solid state relay. And this is the motor controller, which we will leave on. And this uh, switch here on the back side, which um, just kind of have hanging there is the momentary on switch. So the <clears throat> the settings will be here and there's three indicator lights here so I can set the mode on this time delay relay. So um, the moment of truth here we're going to power it on. Let's plug it in. I have no idea what mode this thing is set in so there it goes. Looks like it's counting down to something. Oh, so it's in a time delay on situation. Let's see what happens when I press the uh, momentary on switch. Ah, okay. So that's resetting the cycle. So I have to do it, I have to hook it up. I have to change the mode of that. Okay, I'll get back to that. i to figure out how to do that. All right, so I programmed it to program number two or function two, they call it. Um, function two is a timing off function. There's a whole ton of functions on these modules. They're pretty cool, they were cheap. Um, so now if I press the button, uh, the relay turns on. I've, I've actually got the motor off. I don't need it to run right now. And I've set it for 19 seconds, and then the motor would run for 19 seconds. Um, and I think I can variable speed that uh, and have that be pretty much all the timing I need. And then there it is, it's off. And uh, to not start again until I hit the next cycle. So um, 
uh, proof of concept is, is there. And I'm not sure the motor has tons of power. Uh, um, so now I'm going to put some. I'm going to put this all together and tidy up the wiring. I'm tidying up the wiring and putting it all together. Hopefully, I can get it to fit in this compact little area. That's <laughs> that's the other question. Um, so yeah. I've I've got to put a grommet, not a grommet, but um, I'm going to put, um, I got to center the wiring and then put RTV in there, <clears throat> some black RTV to hold all the wiring in place in the center. So I'll wait till it's all put together before I do that. It'll be the last thing I do before I put it away for the evening. Um, so, so far, um, the proof of concept from the start was pretty accurate. The only thing I changed was I was going to use a bridge rectifier instead of this unit and then use a um, large capacitor um, <clears throat> and a um, 15 amp um, variable basically a variable system like this um, but uh, it didn't it didn't work right it was it made a lot of noise um, so I ended up with this unit um, and I'll put the information on that on where I found those um, it, brought the price up a little bit from what I was hoping. I was trying to keep this thing under $200 to uh, automate, um, but um, fortunately it's gone over that a little. But um, I think that you could probably get a pretty good deal on these things if you look, if you're in no rush and you want to get one of these off of eBay, I think you can find a pretty good deal on one and um, wait for that, that deal to show up. Okay. Uh, let's uh, see what it looks like when it's all put together. Alright, you guys are looking at a completed canning automation system. That's right. Uh, I learned a lot of lessons on the way. I learned that a belt drive will not work. Two reasons. Let me go over some of that. Um, the canning system. Right, so... Um, I need to send some of the stuff back, but the the initial thought was to use a belt, right? Belt, motor, one would think that that's what you'd want to do. That is not what you want to do. Two reasons. The center, the center shaft that runs through the length of the canner, there's brass bushings on either end. Brass does not hold up well to lateral pressure. When you have a belt drive, you have to have tension against the belt. That creates lateral pressure, and that would prematurely wear down the bearing. The other issue is, is that doing this reduces the mechanical advantage of the motor because you're actually working against the bearing friction, because it's not a ball bearing, it's just a pressed bushing. So this will not work lesson learned right away on that. The other thing was is that if I was to do it again I might look for a different kind of motor maybe something gear reduced and then I could go with a smaller motor and a smaller sprocket. So this is a 92 tooth sprocket with a 35 chain. Uh, this is chain number is the size of a chain it's 35. Uh, so it's like a bicycle chain. I got a 72 tooth one and it wasn't quite enough. It almost made it past. There's a certain point in the canning process where it gets really hard um, just before. It's that peak evolution of the, it's like a camshaft in there. And it does one revolution, the last revolution, where it's just a little bit more and it kind of folds that seam over. That one spot, it's like two cranks, it produces quite a bit of torque. And then it's easy after that. I couldn't get past it with the 72 tooth sprocket with this system without blowing the fuse in this box. Now, is the motor powerful enough? Heck yeah, I could have done it with a small sprocket. Problem was the power supply. And if you go higher in amperage on power supply output, the price goes way up considerably. So the one I used is good for about an amp and a half draw. So if you're going to use this, the same one that I used, which you can get the control box, uh, the motor on eBay, which is fairly cheap. The sprocket you can get from um, go-kart supply companies. They're also cheap. 
And if you're going to go that route, uh, then you'll want to use a 92 tooth sprocket. That mechanical advantage is sufficient to get past that real tight spot. Okay, <clears throat> like I said, I tried a few things. So here's the original sprocket, which has the correct shaft size. This is the biggest one I could get from Dayton Granger. Um, that did not have nearly in the, enough torque. So I, I did the math based on nothing. <laughs> what I should have did was took a torque meter, you know, a breaker bar, torque meter, you know, for setting torque on lug nuts or whatever, and found out what the torque was on the shaft. And then I could have done the math then, but I didn't. I guesstimated what it was. And that's why I went with the 72 tooth sprocket initially. And like I said, it wasn't enough. So then um, I calculated out and 82 was sufficient. But then I saw the 92 tooth sprocket and I said, you know what, let's not make another mistake. And I went ahead and went with the 92 tooth. I'm glad I did, because now I can actually add a little bit more pinch if I need it without overpowering the motor and blowing the fuse. Timer box, it's, it's just a timer card. Uh, it's basically an on and off timer for a one shot relay. This box, you don't even need. There is tons of room in this. You can mount this inside and this button on, on the box itself and you can do away with this completely. That was another lesson learned. I did not know ahead of time what was in this box and how much room there was. This, this is spacious in here, so you don't need this box. You can do it without it. So there's an on and off switch. There's the actual speed control, which is strictly set because it's a combination of the timer and the speed that gets the proper amount of revolutions. And I put a little arrow here where I want this to end every time. Now, does it end there every time? No, it doesn't. Um, a lot of it depends on the friction of the can, uh, but I have it so where it ends up at least in this time in this spot between here and here which is great because that's all i need now if it constantly ends up over here i'll eventually start you know start going away from me so all i do is i just bring this back to center after that's all i do i just and now is there another way to do it sure i could mount a positive stop on here with a with a hole and a solenoid and just have it come out and wait for the hole to show up and it would lock it into place and then when I hit the button the solenoid would release and the whole process would start. If I want to get technical, I can even more technical I can. Like I said, this works sufficient enough for me. All I have to do is just grab it and just make sure it's back at the top. And I'm all set. So we need to fill the can. Like I have said in a previous video, if you've watched some of my videos uh, about canning, that if you're going to set up your canner, it has to be with a full can of water or beer. If you decide to practice with beer, I wouldn't recommend it, but um, you can try to set it with an empty can, but then when you fill it, it won't be the same. So it's just best to fill it with water. and set it up as such okay as I said before the the on off switch here when I first plug it in has to be in the off position so when I'm done for the day I will actually shut the power off now the power only applies to the uh, 90 volts DC converter box which is this um, it doesn't shut power off to the whole thing you have to unplug it for that and you can put a main power switch on there if you'd like I didn't see the need okay Either way, you'd still need this in the off position though. All right, so the can's locked into place. My arrow's near the top. Hit the green button. The timer relay is running. The can is turning. The timer's down, down to nine seconds, eight seconds, seven seconds, six seconds, five, four, three, two, one. Arm comes out and the pointer sitting near the top. See? So, I just, I, I'm not gonna have to play with it every time. But once I start seeing it drift either left or right too much, I'll just do a correction. All right. There. Done. No cranking. 
So that's the timer in there. It's actually loose right now, so I just gotta glue it into place, but um, or mount it somehow, so I'll have to take it and mount it to the top. My original thought, and I screwed this up too, uh, was to have those buttons. You can see those buttons lying in there. Those are how you set the timer for the relay board. I was gonna drill holes for each one of them and label them, but I thought the board was going this way, and apparently it doesn't go that way because the majority of the board is in this direction. <laughs> and there's not enough room to drill holes here for the buttons and get the board all the way up. So that's, like I said, screwed that one up. But um, it doesn't matter. Once it's set, I can, the fine tuning I can do with the speed control here, which is basically the speed of the motor. <laughs> as long as the timer runs for a certain amount of time, and that's what I needed. <clears throat> 18 seconds, I believe. 18 or 19 seconds is sufficient for this the whole revolution based on this gear reduction setup when i hit the button it will that two will disappear and it'll start at the count whatever the count was um it's 19 or 18 seconds and then it'll just start counting down holding the relay power relay on the whole time because this is a momentary on switch so hold that power relay that the, the tiny relay on the board will hold the, the solid state relay on for that count. And if the speed is correct on the motor, this will complete the amount of revolutions needed to have this armature come in, come out, this armature come in, come out. Cycle complete. All right. I tried a lot of stuff to get that to work. Sent some stuff back, some stuff I still have to send back, like pulleys and um, V-belt pulleys and V-belts and stuff. Anyway, I did all that for you. <laughs> Cheers, guys. <laughs>